the next speaker is a guy who worked for Microsoft, Amazon, Google, AT&T, Intel, and he's found, he found a very interesting company, very influential in the software development uh, background, and uh, because they do marketing, uh, they do research about the development trends, about the uh, things, the technologies that developers use, not only in the mobile and desktop and web development, but in Internet of Things and everything that developers and their development manager need to consider when they uh, approach some technology or some trend in the community. Uh, my pleasure to present uh, Andreas Constantino. Um, okay, uh, I wasn't prepared to dance. Um, so, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andreas Constantino. I run a research company called Vision Mobile, and what we do is we help the world understand developers. Um, I'm not going to talk to you a lot about who developers are today, but who they're going to be tomorrow, based on what we see some interesting companies doing and how developers are becoming much more than innovators and coders and things we understand uh, developers do today. Uh, this picture is um, from a, the way music used to be produced 30 and 40 years ago. And back then, synthesizers were modular and customizable. So you could tune them to the exact instrument that you wanted them to produce. And there were a very large number of instruments you could produce. Um, this is much how software is produced today. And software is a set of APIs, or is exposed as a set of APIs you can use to create your own applications. And today, it's not just software that is extensible and programmable, but it's increasingly more and more products, smart home products. Um, drones, even cars, um, even uh, industrial products will be customizable. And we see how developers and why developers are important in that. Um, so that's, this is the reason for the background. A bit about me. I've been uh, in the mobile industry since forever. Uh, that's about 14 years. I'm also a dad. I'm an adjunct professor at Lund University in Sweden teaching internet business models. And I'm also an adjunct professor in Athens University of Economics and Business, uh, teaching entrepreneurship. So entrepreneurship and business models are my two sort of hobbies. And entrepreneurship as in running Vision Mobile is, is what I do every day. And that's my handle. So about Vision Mobile, we are the analysts of the developer economy. We run the largest developer research globally, uh, about surveying about 30,000 developers annually. And the reason we do that is because we help the world understand developers, and developers understand the world. Um, and we produce industry reports, we help companies understand developer experience and why, um, uh, why developers uh, adopt certain products or reject others or how they score uh, platforms and so on. So uh, a bit about who are developers today, and this comes from the research we published, I think, three weeks ago or so, uh, from 21,000 developers. I'll just walk you through two slides, which uh, uh, give you a picture of wh where developers are today. So um, I don't know if you can see this in a bigger screen. But these are the four different like, major types of developers. So you have mobile, desktop, cloud, uh, and IoT. And within desktop, we also include web developers. And we find today that the um, largest, share, uh, uh, largest share of developers uh, in any one branch, I use uh, or develop desktop apps, followed by mobile, followed by cloud and backend, followed by IoT. And in fact, with desktop apps, the primary way of developing desktop apps is the browser, uh, as opposed to mobile, which you see on the left, where the browser is only responsible for 9%, and it's really small, 9% in font size. But it's only 9% of developers who use the browser as the primary means to develop mobile apps, and we know and today, it's very intuitive why that is, uh, because of the inferior experience. Uh, on IoT, we see 19% 19, 19 of developers are building either data, devices, or actual software applications. And you see the breakdown there. Uh, it's roughly split between these three domains, so data, devices, and applications. And finally, on cloud and backend, we have a different split, which is showing the market share of the leading platform as a service providers 
uh, we find, like many others, have found that AWS is by far the largest mindshare, followed by Azure and others. And actually, the largest share in that pie is self-hosted. So 42% of developers are not using public clouds. They're using their own solutions because they, for different reasons, security or otherwise, policy or otherwise, they prefer to run their own infrastructure. And another view of where developers are today, this is uh, kind of one of the popular views which shows how langu how, uh, which languages are spoken by developers, and we see uh, high-level languages, HTML5-based uh, languages, uh, JavaScript, CoffeeScript, and so on, Java, and, and these languages being the most popular ones. And we split these by mobile, i.e. front-end, and back-end being cloud languages. But I won't delve into this. You can find a lot of information about the state of the developer nation in the report is called the state of the developer nation and it's a free download this is the part where we help developers understand the world now developers going forward and developers in the future i'm going to spend a few minutes talking about how three very very different companies use developers and i'm going to give you these examples and then i'll tell you um, how developers uh, are, 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 um, are much more than coders and innovators. So how developers, how three companies are using developers? Let's start by the importance of developers in product. So we already have seen thousands of apps being produced for watches. Uh, we're, I think, all expecting that what happened in the mobile industry will happen in the watch or the smartwatch industry. In other words, that the platforms which survive will be the platforms that have the most apps being built for them. Right, I don't think anyone doubts that. The same thing is happening with smart home. All of these products are designed to be extensible by software developers, uh, with some obvious ones like, uh, or well-known examples like Nest and uh, SmartThings, which is now Samsung, and Amazon Echo. Amazon Echo now has over 500 skills, and they're actively um, recruiting and, and, and building the apps on top of that. Tony Fidel, who's the ex-CEO of Nest, says that we're going to see on smart home the same thing that we saw on mobile, that there is an, uh, an incredible amount of apps that are going to be developed uh, for, home, for the smart home, which is not going to be uh, you know, any one company coming from any one company. It's going to be coming from the innovators out there. So again, the, the products today that are going to be surviving tomorrow in the smart home are those that will have the most apps built for them, not the best thermostat, not the best fridge, not the best um, router. They're going to be those that will have the most apps built for them. Um, the same thing applies to the car. Uh, my favorite example is not uh, Apple and, and Google, but it's actually the companies at the bottom of that chart. So uh, Automatic, Carvoyan, Mojo, Dash, and Vinly, all of which are uh, developing uh, a very simple uh, or very commodity uh, OBD2 plug, which plugs into any car built after 96, and which then connects to your smartphone, then is able to extract diagnostic data and do all sorts of interesting things with it. I have a case study coming up on this. Uh, but again, in the car, we're going to see, uh, we already see cases where users are saying, should I be buying this car because it plugs into my iPhone or I can do um, interesting things with it? Uh, in, in, in the future, of course, with self-driving cars, things will get much more complex, but this is, this is beyond the topic. Uh, developers are also conquering the sky. Um, drones did not come from the military. They had a history with the military, but today's technology in drones comes from a hobbyist use of drones. And we see the leading companies in that are actually Chinese, including DJI. Another quote from uh, um, one of these companies. There's a lot of industrial use cases that DJI cannot build the software for, but developers can come and create software for industrial companies. So technology that was incubated in the consumer land is now being adopted in photography, real estate, security, surveillance, and many more uh, clear B2B applications, all through um, using third-party apps produced by developers. And all of these companies have different types of platforms. And there's more and more companies who are producing uh, droids with, with, uh, sorry, drones with a platform. And in general, as you are probably well aware, a lot of competitive battles already have been won by developers or by attracting developers. The, the best case to date is Microsoft, the classic Microsoft Windows. Then we saw iOS and Android. 
Now we're seeing the same thing applied to enterprise software, Salesforce versus Oracle. Um, we see fitness companies even using developers to extend um, their products. Uh, there's a very interesting case, uh, and this is one of my favorite slides, on how iOS and Android won the mobile wars. And, and this is the timeline of, you know, back in history from 2000 to 2013, so up to, uh, back to three years ago. And uh, all of these red dots are actually dead operating systems. There are companies that try to be Android. Even Symbian is there, for those that um, remember Symbian. And the, what m distinguish the dead platforms from those that survive today are two things. One is that they were designed to be uh, developer first, I not designed to be uh, platforms that produced a more capable phone or a cheaper phone, but platforms that were designed to be extensible. So that the reason you would buy the phone, as you do today, is not because of, of, because of what the phone does, but because of what the phone can do with the apps that come with it. So extensibility was the primary design purpose of these platforms. And secondly, they were not designed to make money like Symbian was, but they were designed as a cost center, which drove a, a core business of the vendor where, we, you know, in the case of Apple, it's hardware. In the case of Android, it's advertising. And so only the first mover app ecosystem survived. And we saw recently uh, that uh, Firefox OS was killed, which, you know, what took them too long. Uh, Windows Phone is dying a very slow death. Uh, it's been like that for the last three years. Every chart you see predicts that. You know, it's, it's, it's just, uh, it's just uh, the way it is. And, and it's because of um, economics, demand side, uh, supply, uh, demand, de demand side uh, economies of scale, which I won't go into, but it's, it's all very, very predictable. You know, you didn't need to watch this presentation today to figure this out. I could have told you exactly the same, th same things three years ago because it's all entirely predictable. Uh, so Apple and Google won by attracting developers and creating a platform which used to drive their core business. Now, a bit more about how different companies are using developers. So I have three very different case studies. Um, Apple, uh, which is a hardware company. Tencent, which is an e-commerce company. It's one of the, uh, perhaps the biggest e-commerce company globally. Uh, and it's Chinese, and, and I have Automatic, which is a car app maker. Now, all of them are using developers in different ways. So the iOS platform is basically using developers as the means to generate demand for their phones, their hardware, their uh, watches, their TVs. So apps are produced by these guys, soft, uh, developers, publishers, content retailers, and so on, uh, who are essentially giving a reason for users to buy the hardware. Without these apps, there would be no hardware. So it's providing reasons for developers to use the Apple platform, gives them access to um, the users, gives them access to, gives users access to accessories, gives operators access to users, and the whole thing spins with uh, what's called network effects, which should be familiar to all of you. Um, and uh, essentially, developers here are the demand drivers for Apple. Now, very different case, Tencent. Tencent is a huge e-commerce company. It's bigger than Amazon. Um, they, they have a different system. Um, they started, or, or they didn't start, actually, one of the key apps, uh, which is today uh, uh, the most successful e-commerce, uh, or the most successful messaging platform, which is WeChat. And WeChat is a, is a messaging platform, uh, but Messaging is, that, is just where it starts. Uh, it's actually a messaging platform. It's a payment system. It's a portal. Uh, it's an ecosystem. It's a lot of different things. What it does is say, um, I will let you send messages uh, and you know, make calls and so on to anyone else that has the app. But while you're there, look at all of the other things you can do, all of the things you can, um, the e-commerce activities you can do. You know, um, uh, book a taxi, get cinema tickets, buy insurance, um, even you know, buy jewelry, buy a car. You can do anything through WeChat. It's, it's just a, an, an infinite e-commerce platform. And the e-commerce platform it has um, over 10 million apps in it. And we don't frequently hear this number. It's actually in about an order of magnitude more apps on WeChat than there are on the Apple App Store and Android Play. But 
it, it, it's, it's an ecosystem that is uh, in China and for China and doesn't often get publicized. But again, they use developers or third-party innovators uh, uh, as a means to create engagement and reasons for users to, uh, to, uh, um, to use WeChat. Very different case is Automatic. Automatic, as I mentioned, um, is a plug and an app. So the plug you plug into your car. It applies to most cars in circulation. And uh, this is a diagnostic port. The, the little dongle captures information out of the diagnostic port and then sends it to the app, which then sends it to the cloud. Now, what does this have to do with developers? By the way, this company recently raised $24 million. Uh, from two companies, an, an insurance alliance and a car services alliance, and I'll tell you why this is important. So what did they do is they said, well, out of the box, you can save money on gas, you can diagnose your engine light, uh, you can forget, you can, never, you, shouldn't, you, you can remember where you parked your car, and you can help get help in, in a serious crash. But there's all the other things that you can do once you can get data out of your car, uh, and, and we probably can't figure out what these are, so let's connect IFT to our data, and IFT is this um, uh, sort of a web postman service that allows you to send messages from A to B, uh, from A web service to a B web service. And so within a few months, they had over 300 recipes, i.e. apps on uh, IFT, doing all sorts of things like um, connecting you know, uh, having signals from your car pop up on your watch, or tracking your location on Google Maps, or uh, telling your, um, your Nest thermostat to turn on when your car was approaching, and all sorts of other interesting use cases. Use cases that car manufacturers have been building in their R&D lab, spending millions on each. And by connecting a sort of innovator marketplace, uh, which is IFT, with the, car, the, the data from the car, you could do all of these use cases and recipes, somewhat unpolished, of course, but you could do them out of the box, which shows you the power of exposing a third-party um, uh, innovator network to some very interesting data. So how are companies... This is what's been happening today. So what's the role of developers in the future, and why do we call them business model extenders? It's because developers are not just um, you know, building apps. I mean, apps is just... You know, or software is... is is how you, um, uh, you know, how, you, how you make things work on software-enabled devices. And they're important to, uh, within an organization, the CIO. But we would argue that developers are, should be important to the CEO in every organization. And, and let's look at why. So we argue developers can add value in many different ways to the company. This here you see, uh, in the center you see um, a three-point circle, which is value creation, value capture, value delivery. This is the definition for a business model. A business model is how you create, deliver, and capture value in an organization. It's a widely accepted definition. And if you consider how developers add value to all of these uh, 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 three cases, then you'll have a lot of case studies, which I'll talk about. So developers as the R&D engine is really how um, developers today are helping companies make more money. Uh, you can consider developers as customers, and companies like Azure and Twilio and um, Salesforce and AWS are charging developers, which is you know, um, you know, normal business, business as usual. But then there's uh, some interesting use cases with developers as product extenders and distributors, which to me points to the real future for, for how companies should be seeing developers. So let's take the classic case developers as customers. These are price lists that you see uh, very commonly on the web. And here, companies are charging developers for accessing to cloud infrastructure and, and facilities. And th these should be very familiar. Now, more interesting, FedEx here is using an API to allow developers within a company to integrate the delivery alert services to the internal CRM or ERP or whatever system the, uh, the enterprise is using. And App Exchange uh, from Salesforce has a lot of apps that allow you to integrate Salesforce within the organization. Here, the role of the developer isn't simply somebody who builds apps or software, but it's really someone who takes the product of FedEx, which is a delivery business from A to B, and actually makes it much more useful for lots more people. So developers aren't just innovators here. They are helping extend 
the FedEx product into use cases that FedEx hadn't thought about. Uh, another example, Walgreens, which is a big store in the US, uh, over 8,000 uh, locations, they have an API which you can build within your photo app. When a user takes a picture, they can have that picture printed in Walgreens. So the developer gets a kickback from when a user gets a photo printed, the user gets a photo printed, and Walgreens gets somebody to visit their store and buy more stuff than just the photo. So Walgreens uses developers to resell and, and distribute the fact that Walgreens can also produce uh, pictures, but in fact they get the user to visit the store and buy much more. Amazon has the web affiliate scheme, which they recently, or well, not recently, but they extended to the mobile affiliate scheme, which does the same thing, developers as um, distributors and resellers of the huge Amazon stock by integrating the Amazon stock within their apps. Another more niche use case is Facebook and Twitter, which uh, use developers to actually fish for user data. So when you're integrating Facebook login or Twitter um, social APIs within your application, what you're essentially doing is you're giving Facebook and Twitter access to the user data from your users. So there, Facebook and Twitter are using developers as the means to fish for user data. Um, and so three different cases where we see developers beyond the pure role of innovators. We're seeing how um, in, uh, this is in, in five different sectors, uh, smart home wearables, healthcare, connected car. The leading platforms are starting to appear. Companies are using developers to extend their products and building platforms in you know, all sorts of verticals. And very soon, you're going to end up in a case where unless your product in these markets is designed to be extensible, is designed for allowing developers to build apps on top, then you're not going to be able to compete. So it's going to be uncompetitive, which is why we say that platform-first products are becoming the baseline in industry after industry. And unless your product um, is extensible, then it's not going to be competitive. This is already the case with smart home. It will be the case with connected car. It will be the case with industrial IT much later. Uh, and the way to think about developers is not just as innovators, but uh, innovators who without permission, and without permission is the key element here, without permission can extend and resell your product, whatever company you are. And so developers are far more than innovators and coders. They are really, uh, they, can, they help and can help every company extend its business model. Um, and that's, that's my talk. I hope you found it useful. Um, my contact details, and I shared my Twitter handle earlier. Thank you. I don't know if we have time for questions. I guess not. Thank you.